and uh, thank you the organizer to uh, let me pre uh, represent present our work on, on the update of the development of second principle method on spin models and the initial lattice models. Uh, uh, sorry, Rashu, are, are you in full screen? It looks like uh, yes. Um, yes, I'm a full screen. Are you presentation? Do you have, can you have a presentation mode? Maybe. Yeah, I think I am on presentation mode, but uh, now. Ah, okay. I, I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, as the previous talk showed that we could use second principle method to uh, to build effective models from density function of theory data, and then we could do a very large scale simulations, uh, uh, dynamic simulations, uh, even on a, on a personal computer. That uh, in, in with this method we could have many degrees of freedoms. Uh, in the previous talk is uh, the atomic displacement, uh, which they could use uh, in the atomic post both constant to have harmonic part and uh, on top of that, it, and we could add string and, and harmonic interaction between these uh, displacement. Uh, but uh, sometimes we are not uh, interested in all of the problem modes. We are only interested in some of them. We could uh, do a selection of the mode. Then we could build, uh, uh, for example, the lattice body functions. Uh, then similarly, we could have the uh, harmonic part and the add string. Or we could also have unharmonic interactions between the next one functions. Uh, we could also add other degrees of freedoms like spin, which uh, we can describe with uh, the Heisenberg model. Uh, in actions, we could uh, describe with the type bounding model. Uh, these models can be coupled with the Nattis uh, models. Like uh, we could, uh, then we could combine all of them together to have uh, a global model, which can produce the, uh, the forces or the uh, derivative to the spins or the, uh, the update, uh, updated inaction models for uh, some uh, distorted structures. Then we could do a molecular dynamics, uh, Monte Carlo, PIMD, spin dynamics, or uh, some other. We could uh, send the data to some other external modules to do the calculations. Uh, this uh, is this uh, package map uh, we do. We, uh, we implemented is uh, is designed to 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 be uh, to be a framework that we can plug in um, other potentials like uh, if you have if you design some like a machine learning potential uh, you can also put them in then it can uh, be strictly and be directly coupled with uh, like the spin models and integration models uh, and uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, some update on the on the work on the work on the uh, spin models, also the uh, lattice body function model, and how to couple the electron model with the lattice one uh, with the uh, lattice models. So uh, first, let me uh, briefly introduce the spin model, which uh, we use the uh, with the extended Heisenberg model. We have the isotropic exchange and isotropic exchange and the Janusz monia interaction. So with this, uh, we could uh, get the effective magnetic field of each uh, spin. And uh, we can do spin dynamics using the stochastic non donipschitz gilbert equation. Uh, but uh, to do this, first, we need all these parameters, the isotropic uh, exchange, the exchange parameters here and the Janusz monia interaction. So uh, we have built a Python package for computing magnetic interaction parameters, uh, which is called TB2J. Uh, as the name suggested, it uses type bounding as an input. So we could use uh, the, the Hamiltonian from many DFT code, which are inter uh, interfaced with 190 to uh, generate the type bounding Hamiltonian. We could also use uh, directly the local atomic uh, orbital spaces code like uh, CSTAR or OpenMX. Uh, then with these Hamiltonian, we could uh, uh, calculate the Green's function for the, uh, for the inactions. And then uh, using the rigid spin rotation as a perturbation to the, to the Green's function, we could calculate the uh, isotropic uh, exchange and uh, these exchange parameters. And then we, the, the code could uh, output many form, uh, format which can be directly used by the spin dynamics code, especially multi-binit. We could also uh, 
calculate the magnum band structure with this uh, TB2J code. So uh, the method was uh, proposed many years ago by Nishtenstein and the colleagues. It's usually called the LCAC uh, method and it has many extensions to, to it. Uh, so I will uh, first briefly uh, introduce this method. Uh, we start from the type binding Hamiltonian, which uh, is written in this way. Sometimes we need also the overlap matrix. Uh, here, the i and j are the site indices, the m and m prime are the orbital indices, and the uh, sigma sigma prime are the spin indices. Then we could decompose the uh, local part of the, of the uh, Hamiltonian into scalar part, which is the charge part, or the vector part, which is spin. Um, then uh, the, the, the scalar part we write as uh, P0, and the vector part we write as, uh, well, uh, the amplitude we call it P, and the, uh, the direction unit vector we call it E. Then uh, if we rotate the spin, or, or if we rotate the exchange field here, uh, we could, uh, if, if it is a rigid rotation, then we only change the, the uh, direction so it's, uh, it's a variation of how the, the unit vector here, E. Uh, we could uh, write the Green's function in K space using uh, the overlap matrix and the Hamiltonian. Then we could uh, uh, do a Fourier transformation to, to, to the real space. Then we could decompose J in a very similar way to have uh, the scalar part and vector part. So by some mathematics, uh, we, if we perturb two spin rotations, the energy difference due to the interaction between the side spin side i and j can be written in this way. So we can see that uh, what we need is the variation of the local uh, Hamiltonian at i and j, and also the uh, Green's function. So mm, we, can, we can plug in the spin rotation perturbation uh, which is this, uh, then we get the final uh, expression of the variation of the energy, which is uh, looks very similar to the Heisenberg model. We can see that uh, we have a dot product here, a cross product uh, here, and a symmetric uh, tensor product here. So, uh, and in this equation, we have a A, I, J, U, V uh, matrix element, uh, which can be uh, calculated in, in this way. So here, uh, the U and V are 0, X, Y, and Z uh, from uh, the, the, composition, the decomposition uh, from scalar and the vector part, which have X, Y, Z components. So by comparing this with the Heisenberg model, we can easily find that uh, um, the isotropic exchange and the isotropic exchange and the Janssen's Kumonia can be written as uh, some combination of these A uh, matrix element, which can be easily calculated. So this is the way we, we, uh, we calculate exchange parameters. And in practice, it, uh, if we have the uh, DFT result, it, it is easy, very easy to, to do this. First, we need to prepare the one, uh, one, ha one function Hamiltonian files. And then we can run this command uh, from db to j, which is one, uh, one to j for pi. Uh, we tell the code it's a spinner Hamiltonian and the prefix of the of the of the files is abinito, and uh, here, uh, sorry, is uh, the magnetic element is uh, here uh, in this example it should be iron, and the uh, crystal structure is in in this file the Fermi energy and the image we are using, uh, and uh, then we can, we have output here which have uh, the, the exchange param parameters up to uh, very long distances if, uh, with, within only uh, one or, or three uh, PFD uh, ground state calculation in a small unit cell. So uh, it can be very fast uh, compared with uh, other methods like the, the total energy method. So uh, the next thing I want to discuss is, the, is that we uh, implemented the coupled spin lattice dynamics in multi-binit. So uh, to do that, first we need to have a spin lattice coupling Hamiltonian, which can be written as a tiny expansion of the spins and the uh, lattice distortions. So mm, we could, with this, we could calculate the uh, the, uh, the effective magnetic field for each spin, 
and the pause on each atom. And uh, with this, we could first calculate the pauses from the next part and this part. Then we can update uh, the velocities and displacement. Then we could uh, calculate the spin torques from this as well. Uh, and we, we add that to the uh, spin torque from the, from the pure spin part. Then we could update the spin uh, orientation using the spin motion equation. Uh, uh, well, uh, this is what we do now, but uh, uh, it's, it's possible that we need more complicated uh, capital spin lattice mover, uh, which might uh, be better for like preserving the energy or something else. Mm. So to do this, we first also need the these parameters, which are uh, likely very difficult to beat. So, for example, in, in, in this part in here, this parameter the, is the uh, first derivative to the displacement, the, the derivative of the exchange between G and I and J to the displacement. So, we have developed a method which we could uh, uh, downvote the electron phonon coupling parameters, which are uh, easy to get from, from DFPD in, in Abinit. Uh, and then we could uh, get the spin lattice coupling parameters from that. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so if we uh, take a look at the AI IJUV elements uh, previously used to calculate exchange parameters, we could see that uh, we could uh, vary uh, to the uh, to the lattice displacement. So we could write uh, the, the expansion in this way. We, so we need basically what we need is the variation of the of this uh, exchange field and and the variation to the Green's function. So uh, the, if we take electron phonon coupling parameters uh, to, as perturbations, we could write the variation of H in this way. Uh, if we take only the first order, it's easy to do. Uh, and the, this uh, delta P is, is basically on, uh, the on-site part of, uh, or the local part of the delta H. Then uh, for the delta G, we could uh, easily do that with a uh, Dyson's expansion we can even uh, go to higher order terms with that. Uh, so with that, we could calculate the, the delta A. Uh, then we can easily write the isotropic, uh, the variation of the, uh, of the exchange parameters in a, in a similar way to, to, to the exchange parameters themselves. Uh, so we can notice that uh, here the delta does not, uh, the tail does not have to be a displacement. It could be like a string or, or even like a electric field or some other perturbations. Uh, well, some uh, some of them uh, might not uh, be suitable here, but uh, some of them can do that. Uh, so with this, uh, we could uh, do the uh, coupled dynamics. Then uh, this method I implemented in TP2J, and uh, uh, we have some useful links if you are interested. Um, the documentation, the Git repo, the forum, the, some examples, and uh, a reference paper. So the next thing I want to discuss is the development of uh, lattice model using lattice body functions. If we want to model the lattice distortion, we could uh, use uh, first uh, some specific column modes to represent it. We could also use all atomic displacement, but uh, sometimes we could select a few column branches we are interested in and build the lattice body function just to, to have the effect of these column modes. Uh, for, for, for example, if we have a diatomic chain, then we could we will have the acoustic branch and the, the optical branch. Then we, for each of them, we could build some kind of uh, lattice body function. Um, well, of course, this is a simple example, but uh, uh, that's the idea. Uh, then we could ha have uh, something similar to the lattice model. We have a harmonic term and the uh, unharmonic interactions. And then, um, but uh, why do we need lattice one functions? Uh, so compared to the single polar modes, uh, we can we can have disorder. So uh, we can to like uh, uh, finite temperature. But uh, uh, comparing with the full lattice model, uh, we have fewer degrees of freedoms here. And then it is much easier to fit the higher order terms. Of course, it sacrifices uh, some accuracy, but uh, 
Uh, because these native point functions can usually have a very clear physical meaning, it's, it's, it's much easier to interpret it. Uh, interpret it. So, uh, uh, for inaction one function, the, we have a very good package 190 to, to, to build the next one function. We, could, uh, we also have like uh, a project one function or and a, a few other method uh, which are widely used. But for Natis one function, we do not yet have a, a code to do that. So we have built uh, a code um, which uses the SCDM key method for building Natis one functions. What is SCDM? It's, uh, it's for select column of density matrix. So if we take a look at the density matrix, they are all, uh, the columns of them are localized. If we are using local basis set, of course, uh, and then we can observe that usually the rank of the density matrix is small. So what we can do is we can select a few columns of the density matrix to uh, to represent the to, to form a new basis set, uh, which is the the one function. Uh, then how to do that? Uh, there is a very simple way. We we can use the rank revealing QR decomposition algorithm, which basically select the most representative uh, columns of of a matrix. So mm, then uh, for for a single K, this is uh, easily done. But uh, uh, in a periodic system, we need uh, something um, more. So one problem is the disentanglement uh, because we only want to select a few branches. Uh, so if we can take a look at the, at the density matrix, it is written in this way. And the psi here is the wave function and f is uh, oxidation uh, function. So usually for inaction is the Fermi function. But uh, here we actually don't really need the density matrix. We need something similar. So uh, we can define the f. Uh, it can still be a Fermi function, but we could use other things like a, a Gaussian or something else, which will uh, represent the uh, the spectrum which we are most interested in. Then uh, this density matrix, uh, the the synaptic column of this density matrix will be uh, will be uh, enough to to represent that energy range. Then. Uh, in, in K space, we can have another strategy. Uh, first, we can select the one of the key point as anchor point, and we can select the the columns for for the uh, density matrix at that key point. Then, for all the other key points, we use the same uh, columns. And, and because they are they are some kind of continuous, we could do a Fourier transformation from K space to real space. Then. Uh, in this way, we get the nice one function in, in, in real space. Uh, there, are, there are many advantages of this uh, method. First, because we use the density matrix, so it doesn't have a gauge problem. Uh, and then it is very easy to use. We only have to tell the code uh, how many one functions we need and uh, uh, what is the energy, energy uh, range we, we are interested in. Uh, they are the, these key points are all independent, so uh, it's easy to parallel over K, and it's quite easy to implement. And uh, the result can be used as an initial guess for a uh, maximum localized one function to, to, to be more localized. So we have uh, made a Python package for building NAPIs and also electron one functions. Uh, so I, I, I show some example here. This is ground theme titanate with uh, the electron band structure. So we could uh, uh, select like the T2G band here to build one functions. Uh, and uh, these two are, are the phonons for barium titanate. We actually implement, implemented two methods, the SCDM key method and projected one function method for the phonon. So we could uh, uh, select the, the unstable branches to to do the, select, uh, uh, the next one function. Uh, so now we, we have both uh, Python and Fortune versions of the algorithm. Uh, we do not yet have LOTO splitting, but uh, it should be easy. And the in integration of this into Abinit and also AnaDDB uh, is, uh, is on the way. So next, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the inaction Natis coupled models. Uh, we have now two ways to do the inaction Natis models. 
first we use inaction as uh, active part and then we could uh, use inaction as passive part what does that mean so uh, if inaction is used as an active part it contributes to the energy uh, so uh, what we do is first we build a lattice model and this lattice model is fitted to the DFT data with a reference in uh, electronic structure instead of the, the one we uh, the, the structure really is. For example, uh, in a magnetic uh, structure, we we choose the reference structure to be to be non-magnetic, then we could have different magnetic configuration uh, in the in the in the in the in the final electron uh, model. Then mm, we fit the uh, Inactual Hamiltonian, which is a uh, tight bonding like Hamiltonian, uh, to the same DFD data. Then uh, we could add some correction. Your, your five minutes left. Huh? Okay. Uh, then we could add some correction to, to it, for example, a Haba view uh, correction. Then we have the final uh, inact energy expression, which, because uh, the reference electronic uh, energy is already counted here, we, we, we subtract and uh, uh, we could have the total energy. Another way is that uh, uh, the, the, the lattice energy is already fit fit to the uh, to the target electronic state. So we, we can do uh, dynamics with the with this uh, fitted uh, lattice uh, lattice model. Then in the end, we could take a snapshot of the lattice dynamics and uh, uh, calculate electron Hamiltonian from that. And then we could see the electronic structure. Uh, here, the electronic structure, we, we write the, form, the formalism here. So it is a, a tight bonding model plus uh, some uh, electron following coupling. And then we could add electron, electron interaction using a Hubbard term. So I, I have an example uh, to show that uh, uh, we studied the, the metal insulation transition of VO2, which is uh, uh, both uh, the, the, the MIT is accompanied by a root to, uh, to uh, monoclinic phase uh, at uh, 340 K. So this is the root phase. Uh, it has uh, two unstable phonon branches. And at R point, we have two phonons uh, uh, that degenerate and, uh, in BMC. If we uh, put them all together, is the is the uh, monoclinic phase in, in this figure. So we could select the, the the two unstable branches and build the build the lattice value function here. This is the, uh, the eigenvalue of I C, not the volume, uh, but it's uh, well similar. So um, the lattice value function looks like uh, well. In, if we have put one next one function in a supercell, it looks like this. So we can see some local distortions. Then uh, we could do the dynamics of lattice point functions and to see uh, the local distort, uh, local lattice point function amplitude. We could see that at a high temperature and at low temperature. Uh, at low temperature, the uh, the uh, the amplitude are, are larger, and the uh, at high temperature, this is. Uh, well, we could, we could see that uh, we have different uh, domains uh, forming, and uh, we could uh, then calculate the electron uh, density of state at the Fermi energy uh, for, for each point. We could see that at no temperature, uh, most of the, uh, them are insulating, and at high, 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 high temperature, we have many uh, uh, density of state. So we could also do a statistics to the two uh, lattice point function at uh, each point, we could do a histogram. We can see that uh, at high temperature, they are more uh, homogeneous, but uh, still they have uh, a lot of weight on the local uh, minimums. And at uh, low temperature, they condense into one of these point. So uh, if we look globally, we could see the, uh, the, the change of the distortion, distortions. Uh, so we could see the phase transition we could also calculate the total length of state. We could see that uh, at the uh, uh, low temperature, it is mostly insulating, and at high temperature, it uh, goes uh, more and more uh, conducting. OK, so a summary. We have uh, have some new features in TP2J. We have DMI, uh, anisotropic exchange, 
and we have method to calculate the spin lattice coupling by downloading electron coulomb coupling. We also implement the spin lattice couple dynamics in multi-bit. Uh, we have some tools to build the uh, lattice point function models, uh, and the dynamics of lattice point function is also implemented in multi-bit. We have tools to build electron lattice coupled models, and uh, uh, we could uh, simulate electron band, band structure in thermalized lattice. And uh, thank you for your uh, uh, attention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Roshi, for this for this uh, presentation. And uh, I don't see in the chat uh, questions, but I can start to have some. So we know each other, but that's, uh, for the what it was for the method of getting the spin lattice coupling parameters by downloading electron coulomb coupling. Did you implement that in the TB2G or is another script? Uh, it's in TB2J, it's not advertised, it's not uh, quite complete, but uh, it's there. Okay, you are, it is in TB2J. And what are the ingredients you need from uh, Abinit? Mm, so, uh, okay. the, it, we need the Hamiltonian and the uh, electron phonon coupling uh, matrices. So, you have to do an electron phonon DFPT calculation and then you read the output from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also need a need the y function uh, uh, transformation matrix, the, the AMM matrix. Okay. And okay. See so no questions. So is the uh, SCDMK for the for the yeah. ah, question? No, it was enthusiasm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, that's really powerful and potentially they could use it for the DMFT as well and, and other parts if you need to get uh, decent Vanier functions. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that can be very useful for many things. Uh, it is basically a, a, a very cheap way to, to build funny function and funny functions are useful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. And then when you say the lattice funny function dynamics is implemented in multi bits. So was mm -hmm. it something related to what William has implemented or not? Uh, it's an independent uh, implementation. Uh, so uh, basically it uh, to take the, um, the the general framework of, of Matipinit. So mm -hmm. uh, there's not much work to do because everything is already almost there. Okay. And the coupling with the electrons is? Uh, this is not in Matipinit. So is it available for any user? <laughs> uh, for now, uh, it, it, it is uh, still in uh, any stage, so Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So the vanadium oxide was uh, the first example of application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs>